Welcome to the Unbounded podcast series, where we help you attain new levels of performance and well-being by learning about the human mind. In this podcast, we are going to talk to you about the art of dealing with difficult people. And we're going to attempt to really challenge your thinking about how you're seeing people and how you're thinking currently. So to start off with, you might like to think about people that in your life you think are difficult. You might be able to think of someone in your personal life, perhaps a relative, a friend, or someone in work who you just find it all very difficult in how to deal with them on certain situations or certain topics. And what we're exploring in this podcast is the role that your mind's playing in that. Because actually, there's no such thing as a difficult person. There's only thinking that creates them that way. Now, for some people listening, they might be thinking, well, how can that be true? Because this person behaved in that way or that person said this and, you know, that's really difficult. Or they might have a situation where three people in the office all agree that that particular person is a difficult person. So let's maybe just take a moment to explore the mind and and how it works in creating the experience that we're living in because that gives us some clues as to why it's never really about the other person and it's only ever to do with the thinking that we've got about the other person or the situation. So most of us I'm sure can relate to um, a time where we've had an interaction with someone and it's kind of gone in a way where we think, well, no, that was they were being really difficult about that. Or I find it really challenging and difficult to deal with that person in this situation. And when we take a look at the, the mind and, and how it works, what we'd be suggesting to you is that even though it really looks like a person can be difficult because of the way they're behaving, we're never really directly experiencing another person's behaviour or even that person as a whole. Because the only way that we can ever experience anything is through the story and the narrative that the mind has created. So to put that another way, the only way we're ever experiencing something or anyone is through thought. And what that means is that because that's a creation through our mind, it looks and feels very real to us that the way another person is behaving is difficult and we don't like it. So even though that looks and feels real, it's not an objective truth. It's only ever how it is looking to us. And what's interesting is, if it was an objective truth, then everyone would find that person difficult. But there there are examples where I know I think someone's difficult, and yet you find them totally fine to work with. Or a situation where I'm convinced someone's difficult and then the very next day I have a conversation with them and it was fine and I, I actually meet them and I, it, it was really great and they weren't difficult at all. And indeed, often there'll be the, that variability that happens in different situations with the same person. So on one day in a particular interaction with them, it can really look like they're being really difficult. And yet on another day, same person, same behaviour almost can look completely differently to us as well. And the key thing then we're looking at here is the story that we create in our heads and what that shuts down. Because if I've got a story in my head that says you're difficult and or this conversation with you is going to be difficult, then what it does is it's sending messages to my psychological system that will give off certain chemicals, will have me behave a certain way that will likely not get the best out of the interaction. And and you as listeners might be able to relate to this is when you've got thinking that says, this is going to be really difficult. How do you show up? What do you say and what do you not say because of that? Because actually what thought is doing and the story that we've created, it's shutting down us being as effective as we could be in any situation. We're already going into it with a certain aperture closed down that means 
our effectiveness in the, the connection that we have with that person, the listening that we have for that person it, it is not what it could be. So we're already tarnishing the interaction because of who we're showing up to be. And I think what we've seen in the businesses that we've worked with is that this can be hugely detrimental, not only to working relationships, but to the um, outcome of a business as well. So quite recently, I was talking with a client who works in a reasonably small business, and they were in a really difficult situation with another team member. And this has been going on now for over a number of months. And, you know, things have been happening and, and people have really, they're seeing each other as very difficult. And in a way, the relationship's completely broken down. And just in talking to this one particular person, she it was very clear that she was completely caught up in the narrative in the story that her mind was creating about the other person. Now, it would be fair to say that you could ha you could look at some of the behaviours of the other person and say, yep, yeah, that's not great, probably not a good idea to have said that or done that. However, the immersiveness of, of just how caught up this client was about what was going on was really preventing her from accessing any intelligent thinking to be able to connect with the other person on her team and really deal with whatever was going on. And I think that's a really key point, Rena, is that it prevents us from being intelligent and as effective as we could be because we're caught up in our own story. And I think this is a good moment to talk about inference ladders. So there's a term called inference ladders. It came out of some work at, at Harvard uh, with, under a chap called Chris Argyris who came up with this term uh, inference ladders. An inference ladder is um, what we tend to do. If you, if you think of the bottom of a ladder, there's, there's what is at the bottom of the ladder. There's what happens. And then there's what we make it mean. There's what we infer about it. So if you do something, let's say you turn up what, late one day for work. Well, I might not think of any, anything of it, but let's say you turn up a second day late for work also. Before I know it, without potentially realizing it consciously, perhaps not even realizing it, I'm starting to make it mean something. I'm starting to make it mean that maybe you're unreliable or maybe you're not committed. And then guess what happens? You do a presentation and it doesn't go very well. And I'm coupling that all together and I'm going up a ladder about you and going, well, maybe you're not committed anymore. Maybe you're not reliable. Right? And, and the higher up the ladder I go, the worse it gets because I start to say, well, I don't trust you anymore. I don't like you. You're the wrong person for this business and so on and so on and so on. And I go up a ladder about you. And, and, and the sad thing is, I, I might even be going up this ladder without even realizing I'm going up a ladder. But as I'm going up the ladder in my thinking about you, I give off a certain vibe to you that you pick up. It also shapes my behavior to you. As I'm going up my ladder, building up and giving off this vibe and shifting my behavior, of course, you pick that up. And you start to go up a ladder yourself. And you start to create some thinking on the ladder that infers, oh, Martin doesn't rate me anymore, Martin this, Martin that, or maybe I'm not any good anymore, maybe this is the wrong place for me to work now, and so on and so on. And what we see is, all over the place, people up ladders about each other. And, and when you're up a ladder, and they're up a ladder about you, you've got no relationship, you've got no connection, you've just got judgment. And of course, this is what causes all the conflict in the world that we exist within. And coming back to one of your key points, Rena, from earlier is that the problem with being on the ladder is it prevents us from dealing with situations in the best, most effective way, however someone else is being. So it might be that this person is exhibiting behavior that I could call difficult. It, it, it could be that they're doing some things that are inappropriate or wrong or bad. But when I then go up a ladder and I'm caught up in a story about that, that's when I lose my calmness, my effectiveness, my consideredness 
to deal with it in the best possible way. And it's interesting because I, I again, was speaking with um, a client after she had been on, on one of our programs and having had some issues with a difficult person in the past in, in her workplace, um, you know, when she went back into the office, it was just so clear to her the narratives and the stories that had been created through her mind. And and she just saw the whole situation really fresh with a, a clear perspective and really didn't see that person as difficult anymore. Now, that totally not only did it transform their working relationship, but it also had the impact of transforming the energy within the office as well. And what she was explaining to me was that what happened was when she went back, first went back into the office with her new insights around, you know, this seemingly difficult person and noticing how it had been created through her mind, what she realised was that just how many other people in the office had also been involved and taken part in the building of that story. Because what would then happen was that certain people would come up to her and almost try and engage with her in in conversation about this difficult person. And it was so clear to her now that that wasn't the case that she would say, look, I don't want to, I don't even want to go there because it's just not how I see it anymore. And over some time that then had the effect of of really, it was like a ripple effect. Um, and so it wasn't not only her own relationship that changed with the other person, but through the office as well. There's three values that I would like to talk about at this point. Compassion, curiosity and transparency. And these three values are really powerful and really valuable in, in helping you practically work through these difficult situations. The first word, compassion. So compassion, compassion for, for everybody and everything and, and uh, in every situation. What is very easy to do is to come from judgment. So we see some bad behavior or we see something going wrong and we, before we know it, we're judging them. And um, the compassion piece is to really realize that Everybody's just doing their best at whatever they're doing. They might not be doing it well. Their might, behaviors might be out of order. But, but actually having compassion for anybody in any situation. And the second word, curiosity. So curiosity to explore what's really going on with the person. Why they're behaving the way they are. Because we often misunderstand what, why someone's doing something. We don't really understand why they're doing it. We don't understand their perspective in, in what they're doing. It reminds me of a venue that we used to work with. And um, one day I got uh, an email from a, a particular uh, man that was running our event. And it was really abrupt. It was really short. And I, I could very quickly decide that he was a difficult person. But what I did is I, I had compassion to realize that something was going on and I had curiosity and I decided to go and meet him and explore. And I, I went to meet this chap and, and I realized that I just didn't understand what was going on for him at all. And with curiosity, we can really peel back and understand what's going on behind why someone is behaving the way that they are. And that in itself often totally disperses and dissolves the concept of them being difficult in the first place. The third value that is so important in the art of dealing with difficult people is transparency. So if I've used compassion and curiosity, first of all, then what I've done is I've really spent some time and understood where that person is coming from. I understand their view, understand how they feel, and guess what they feel understood too. What's also important then in the art of dealing with these situations is that I'm able to be transparent with, with other people. So with compassion, I'm going to be transparent about my thoughts, my feelings, and my motives. I'm going to share where I'm coming from, what I think and why, what my view is, and so on. I'm not going to hold that because if I hold that and store that up, then it's unhelpful too. Now, if, we've, if we're in conflict in a situation and, 
and you've shared fully, really fully your thoughts, feelings and motives, and I have too, then we reach this platform of simplicity and understanding on which we can really work forward and co-design whatever solution or whatever situation would be appropriate from that point on. So compassion, curiosity and transparency, what they do is when utilised effectively have the ability to totally dissolve any inference ladders that you and they may be making about each other. So for, for those listening, we, we, we'd love to invite you to, to just really reflect on where are you holding stories or narratives about other people that you're finding difficult? And, and what are those stories and narratives? And where might you be looking for evidence to justify your position about them or perhaps being judgmental? Because all of those are really are signs that you're caught up in some very personal thinking about the about a situation or about another person and what might it be like what could your relationship be like with this person if all of the thinking that you had about them had dissolved and none of that existed and there was pure connection and this is the work that we do in teams if you look at teams that you've been in you might be able to relate to a team that you've been in that has been dysfunctional well, what is that dysfunction? Largely, it's ladders. It's people have got stories about each other that, that then makes it difficult to have effective conversation with each other. And, and this is the game. This is where we spend our lives, is working with teams to dispel this ineffective ladder building, this story making that prevents this connection, Rena, that you're referring to here. To find out more about our work with individuals, teams and organisations, please visit www.thepragmagroup.com or if you'd like to connect, email us at info at thepragmagroup.com. <laughs>